Good morning from a beautifully sunny England. Not. Look at the state of this shirt. Anyway, time for a bit of breakfast in the shack. There you go. And uh, also time to tell you a little bit about my final instalment of linear loading. Wire everywhere. I've got. Hello there. Right, some high tech music. Two Echo Zero, Tango Whiskey Golf Portable. Two E Zero TWG. Name's Tim, based in the south coast of England. Uh, thanks for stopping by. It'd be great to have you join us and subscribe. And welcome to the channel. If you have subscribed already, welcome back and thanks for joining me again. Well, as you can hear from the ambient noise on the roof, it's uh, raining and raining quite badly at the moment. We've had some great days of sun here in England, but uh, <laughs> the clouds are back and they're back with a bang. So uh, there you go. So if you do hear some uh, ambient noise on the roof, uh, the, the roof, uh, the uh, the rain dripping on the shed roof. Oh, sorry, you guys. remember the deal with linear loading? If you've watched any of the previous videos, you know what we've been doing. We've been using 450 ohm ladder line. That end goes onto the ballon bottom end shorted together you can see that shorted together okay now what we've gone and done is added a third wire so you can probably see the green wire running through the middle what I've done effectively is kept the, the two wires as they were shorted at the ends but of course at the at the end closest to the ballon to the center this wire goes to the ballon and this wire, of course, wasn't doing anything. But what I've done now is just very crudely, just for experiments, attached the centre wire to that wire. So we now have got a third wire going back down the middle of the ladder line. And it ends... Bear with me a second. It ends here. OK? And what I've tried to do is just punch some holes uh, every few inches and just weave the wire in and out through the through the ladder line and just got cable ties just to uh, keep it as you know, close to the center as I can. A bit crude, but it works. I've done that for both of those short uh, legs of 450 ohm ladder line. If you remember, both were five feet and uh, seven inches long, which is about 1.57 meters. And if you remember, just using the two wires of the 450 ohm ladder line, shorted together we got a tune on 28.1 megahertz which meant that we managed to reduce the size of a 10 meter dipole by about 30 percent maybe even a third okay that's how that works now what i did was uh, put this center wire in as i just described and we're going to see how much we managed to reduce the length of the dipole by have we reduced it by maybe another 10 percent how long is this now resonant at a particular frequency? In other words, if we've got this resonant at a lower frequency, we can work out just how short this dipole is compared to a normal single half wave single wire dipole. Okay, without much further ado, let me show you what I did. Let me show you the results on the analyzer. And then we can sum up what we found. Just before we continue, I give you the wrong measurements for metric uh, for the metric equivalent there for the five foot seven inch leg. So in case you're working in meters and centimeters, each leg is five feet seven inches, or one point six seven meters, not one point five seven meters. So apologies for that. Uh, the old head's not working very well today. Anyway, on to the analyzer and on to the setup. Right, here's the test setup. That's the vertical dipole. I do three wires linear loaded and there's the coax going into the shed shack and that's where the analyzer will be situated on a seven meter fiberglass pole there the antenna and here we are at the bottom end showing a 221 SWR moving to 20.96 at 1.4 and then up to about 21.1 at 2 to 1 so what we've done effectively is created resonance on 20.96 megahertz which is just a shade under the 15 meter band that's lower than i thought i thought we'd go down to about 23 megs so uh, that surprised me a little bit that we're basically down to 21 megahertz and if you think about it the length of the antenna as i said earlier was uh, just a shade over 11 foot which is about three and a third meters uh, effectively 
that is half the size of a 15 meter dipole. So what we've gone and done here now by adding the third wire is we've halved the size of a normal dipole. The trade-off, well as you saw from the SWR meter, we've got a 2 to 1 or less SWR bandwidth of about 250-260 kilohertz. So we're not covering the whole band here, which a normal dipole would. And I dare say there'll be trade-offs in terms of efficiency as well, but hey, if you've only got 15 or 20 feet to play with, if you've got a balcony in an apartment somewhere, or maybe just a small loft space, or a, a tiny garden, then it's better than nothing, isn't it? And what I think I'll need to do, maybe just is sum everything up, oh, there he is, he's alive, is sum everything up in the next video. I'll do very quickly, a very short one, just to summarise briefly what we found with all these videos. What does two wires uh, of the 450 ohm ladder line give you as a linear loaded dub, uh, dipole in terms of lengths and where you need to go with it and where do you need to go with the third wire. In other words, if you put a third wire in, then how much does that shorten the dipole length by? And that'll just wrap things up nicely, won't it? Anyway, thanks for watching. If you uh, like what you see, subscribe and share. Thumbs up, tell me why. Thumbs down, please tell me why. And it's great to have you on board. This is 2 Echo Zero, Tango Whiskey Golf, but a bit of indigestion from his breakfast. <laughs> Wishing you 73, and good luck with your antenna experiments too. Bye-bye.